Okay, this sermon is entitled, Chosen Unto Service. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 85 reads, Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin, Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Now the Bible teaches that God chooses people, but this is not Calvinism, and he does not choose people unto salvation, because that would make God a respecter of persons, nepotistic, cronyistic, and favoritistic, somebody who plays favorites, and this is the epitome of pride. These stupid unsaved Calvinists claim that they have nothing to boast about, but if God chose you unto salvation with the exclusion of others, then that's the epitome of bragging rights. And the reason why this is so stupid is because every single person is a sinner. We're all commensurately sinful, so why would God choose some people over others? when everyone is sinful. It makes no sense at all. But the truth is, is that the Bible does not teach this fatalistic predestination garbage. It teaches rather that we're chosen unto service. Now, in a lot of cases, the Bible talks about us being chosen collectively, not individually. Turn over to 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's take a look at verse 9, and it reads, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So in this sense, we have a whole group of people nationally being chosen. And we also see in the scripture that God chooses people who aren't even saved. So obviously it can't be talking about salvation. Turn back to John chapter 6. We're dealing with Judas Iscariot. It reads in verse 70, Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? So this verse alone refutes this Calvinistic garbage that's being pushed by these stupid unsaved heretics on YouTube. Now let's take a look at another verse on this subject that makes it clear that being chosen is unto service, not salvation. Turn over to John chapter 15. Now what these stupid Calvinists do is they throw verses at you without even reading them, without giving you any context, without exegeting them. And you don't even have to do that with this particular verse. You just have to read the verse, and you'll see that it's not teaching this double predestinarianism garbage. It's simply teaching that God has chosen certain people to serve him. It reads in verse 16 of John chapter 15, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Now, it tells you what these people are being chosen for. They're chosen to bear fruit. They're chosen to have their fruit remain. And like I said, this is a byproduct of service. So, this does not teach that God chooses people to be saved and then just hopelessly damns the rest of the world. Anyone who believes that is sick in the head and twisted and straight out of the pits of hell. And that's where Calvinism came from. So we need to watch out for these false prophets who teach this and understand that those who are predestined, according to the scripture, are predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus. And those who are chosen are chosen to bear fruit and have their fruit remain. It's all about service not salvation. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.